don't know if you can see it. That's a little hard to but see, but that's I get okay. This, we believe you. <laughs> yeah, it is hard to see. But I get this call and it says, fire vehicle. Uh, there's no exposures on U.S. Highway 60 at mile marker 214. So it's just two miles up the road. Yeah, but I've self-quarantined myself and I can't go help. Now, let me tell you this. If they call me and say, Steve, I need help, I'll do it from the distance. But... Otherwise, I'm going to keep with the self-quarantine. That's right. Doing your part. Doing your part. Good yeah. there Good there on that On that uh, oil. Anything else you wanted to add on the oil for darkening it up? No, that's the best thing you can do. Folks, when you want to change your, your saddles to be darker, you oil the exterior. When you just want to oil them to keep them, to get them softened up and this sort of thing, you, you oil the interior. So the rough side is what you oil all the time. And I had another lady call me today. And folks, it is next to impossible to take and have all your colors match. Uh, and, and don't ever ask me because browns and reds, I'm colorblind. So I, I have to have my wife look at them. But all of our stuff is pretty much stained the same way. But when you have leather, you can have times where it changes. But Eventually, you'll get to where you oil it, and it'll all become the same color. Very good. All right, next question. This one come in from uh, Fred. He says, Mr. Edwards, I was searching YouTube for some shows that addressed a mule that didn't want to pick up a hind foot. I watched your video and tried the scapula point to get the mules to pick up their front feet and uh, how you disengage the hind leg. My issue with my mule, she leans on me as I try to pick up her right hind foot. She will allow me to pick up her other feet. I have been rubbing her legs, I believe, to let her know I am not trying to hurt her. Uh, the result was my being able, without much effort, to pick up her right hind leg going straight back. She was just, She is just too big to hold her leg and at the same time while trying to disengage her hind leg. Any ideas on why she leans on me? What is it she's trying to tell me? I love that. He says, what is it that she's trying to tell me? Uh, this mule yes. is new to me. She's about 11 years old, 15'3". What would you say to Fred? Okay, number one. Now, I know you folks are, are thinking, why am I saying this all the time? Number one, get the teeth balanced. Because here's the deal. When the mule drops his head, the lower shelf goes forward and when it goes forward if the tmjs hang up it'll make him uncomfortable and when you're picking up a foot they'll a lot of times lower their head so that you can pick up the foot easier on them so that's one next thing is you're right she's probably telling you something she could have a hip out of place or she could have a vertebrae out of place especially if people have been using a tail grouper Tail croupers are really bad about pulling on a tail and putting hips out of place. So go to your chiropractor. Get a chiropractor, have them look at your mule, and uh, and and uh, have them get the back into place. Because here's the thing, Dave. What we used to do was tie up a back leg, and by golly, you're going to pay attention. But now i found that let's get the mechanical out of the way first. Let's make sure that we're not hurting the mule because he has his spine out of place or has a hip out of place. Make sure that's done right. And if that's done right first, then if we have to tie up a back foot and let him walk on three feet, we can do that. We've got some video on that, Dave, Yep, I of, just of me doing that. I just um, shared it on, uh, on the comments section. Folks, if you yep. think that it's all rainbows and sunshines when Steve works with a mule, you have got to see this video. Uh, I just put it in. It is probably uh, the second biggest struggle I've seen Steve have with an animal, and it goes on for about 13 minutes trying to pick up this rear foot. Now, the first time, the, the biggest struggle that I, I, I've seen uh, with the mule kicking back up and, and everything uh, had to do with a trailer, but this one is excellent. It's not cut. It's not made to, to look like Steve, you know, oh, just push here, do that. It's 13 minutes of struggle, and if he can do it, you can do it. Right. Right. If a 70-year-old guy can do it, you guys can do it. That's what I'm saying right there. That's what 70, I'm saying. 70, golly. Yeah. <laughs> what else? Just had a moment. <laughs> yeah, just had a moment. God, you're 70, Steve? Yeah, you're 70. 
Okay, what else, Dave? All what right, else we let's, got? Let's see here. Let's see if we can get through these. Um, Isabel emailed. She said, um, thank you for all the information on your website. Um, uh, oh, we answered this, but I brought it up, so we'll just talk about it real quick. Um, I have a big mule that I ride. Unfortunately, she gets rub, rubs under her girth behind what would be her elbow, she, elbow. She's very wide bellied and round going narrow today, narrower today front. Um, I have done modifications to help her, an ergonomic girth to have more room behind the elbows, Lanacane, uh, anti-rub cream, and uh, Acruler. I live in low country, South Carolina. There are no hills. I wait until she is completely healed before riding again and never for very long. My saddle is a dressage uh, and she seems comfy. What else would you suggest I do? Steve, what would you say to Isabel? I just was telling a lady today that was having problems, identical same problems. And uh, folks, uh, flat ground or not, you have to ride with the breeching. You have to. It's because of the way they're made. You are going to continue to have cinch sores. It's got nothing to do with the cinch. It's got everything to do with the saddle. A dressage saddle does not work on the mules. Dave, you go on the internet and you can see picture after picture of people riding their animals in English. Where's that saddle sitting? On top of the scapula. And it's beating it to death. Now, yeah, they're riding. And yeah, they're jumping. And this sort of thing. But folks... It was never designed for trail riding. It was designed for da, 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 competitions in an arena jumping. And it was designed for da, 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 a horse. Folks, you've got to have a rear cinch. You've got to have a breaching. I don't care if it's as flat as your arena or, or whatever. It, it, it makes no difference. You have to have a breaching. You have to have a rear cinch. No ifs, ands, or buts. You know? Uh, and, and I'm sorry, I would love to tell you that I designed a saddle or there's a saddle out there. There's not. You have to, and this is important, got to have a rear cinch. You got to have a breeching. Now, I know some folks that are riding uh, 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 with the English saddles and some of them kind of compete and stuff. But look at all of them, folks. The cinch is up underneath the front leg. All right. And the saddle sitting on top of the scapula. That's the way it is. It's because mules are V-shaped in their shoulders. Horses are A-shaped in their saddles, in their shoulders. Mules carry their weight down low. Horses carry their weight up high. And mules are hourglass belly toward the shoulders. That saddle is going to go forward. Okay. I, I would love to tell you it's going to work. It's not. I took a, a Cosby saddle one time, uh, Dave. And we tried to do some work to it, putting the rear cinch on it and things like this, and we just couldn't keep it in place. It kept on going forward, and it had a lot to do with the way the saddle is designed. A dressage saddle or an English saddle just doesn't work on a mule or donkey properly. There we go. Um, all right, then. Let's see here. Uh, I've got, I still have more questions, but I want to respect time here. Uh, let's see. Um, Here's a quick one. Uh, this one's from Myra. She asks, um, I see that most mule owners clip the mane, forelocks, and sometimes the upper tail hair. I can see why the tail might be clipped to avoid getting caught up in the britchin. Gracie has blonde streaks in her mane and a tail which look pretty. Is the mane clipped for the mule to look for a or just for looks or for a practical reason? If I were to guess, I'd say it's to avoid ticks in the back country. Um, and then, um, yeah, there. That's what she's got. What would you say? It's it's for looks. The old timers used to roast their mane because it stood up. Listen, all of my mules have a long mane on them. Had them had long manes on them. Uh, and, and the tails, they are clipped according to if they ride, drive, and pack. So they call they're called bales. You bale the tail to to say the mule ride, drives, and packs. I gave a mane on all of my mules because of this. I ride, and when I get a hold of that mane, I get a hold of the mane, and I get a hold of the horn, and then I get on. You folks that are climbing on, climbing the pummel, come, pummel, and the can of climbing on this way, you're gonna make that saddle roll. So the purpose for me to have a mane is to get the mane, get a hold of the horn, so I can climb in the saddle. 
I prefer a main on all of them. Okay, now, traditionally, why did they take the main off? Uh, because of the harness, because of the collar up there. Uh, but there again, all of my mules naturally all had about a three to four inch main all the way across. There we go. Um, all right. We're almost at, can we do one more question, Steve? Absolutely, please, right. yeah. Uh, this one is uh, head off a mule that's bucking. Uh, this is uh, someone who goes by the screen name of Truth Seeker says, Hi, Steve, what is the best way to head off a mule bucking as you feel them round back and drop head? With horses, I can lift the head and she can't buck. Had a mare that would buck when she got anxious about things. Uh, mules, I swear, bend in half, bend in and uh, in half embrace, real good. So not sure if it's the method working would work with the mule. Also on the same topic, if the mule does get away and goes into a bucking rage, what's the best way to stop? I used to lift the head and bend flex till she settled down. Working for my old mare. Thanks so much. Uh, maybe put this on your online's question. Looking forward to your chats with Dave. I enjoy listening in the morning with a cup of Joe. Yeah. So, uh, when it, the, she, she comes from uh, Michigan, if I remember right, and uh, and lots of questions and this sort of thing. Anyway, here's the deal. Yeah, a mule will fold in two, and pretty soon they get, especially if they're using horse saddles. There's vertebrae out of place could even be a shoulder out of place and this sort of thing so one of the first things i do folks if they're if, if a mule is running off if a mule is blowing up if a mule is showing any discomfort at all first thing i do is get the teeth balanced and framed up get the tmjs fixed not just floated balanced and then after that every year floating the next thing i do is go get a chiropractor and have the chiropractor at them and go from there. Uh, if your mule saddle is too wide, that is going to get up on the sixth and seventh rib, and it could possibly kick a rib out of place. So a lot of people use this, you, that use full quarter horse bars. If the mule has been ridden in full quarter horse bars, she possibly could have a uh, some vertebrae out of place because of the pressure against that uh, fat pocket on that sixth and seventh rib. And so there's some reasons right there. So. Uh, what would I do? I would not be riding. Get off the saddle. You don't need to be there. I would do sur singly after I'd done the mechanical. After I'd done the teeth and the chiropractor, and they give me a bill of health, good. Then I would start sur singly and getting them softened a bit. When you go to pull one rein on a mule, he can fight you easy. But when you go right, left, right, left, right, left, they cannot fight you. They'll get off of balance. And that's where my mule riders, Martin Gill, works so well very good all right steve i want to share with some folks something that we've been working on um one of the things one of the reasons why we do this live stream here is uh is because you've got this information that you've accumulated since the early 80s when i was born i might add not trying to make you feel old um you've accumulated all this information and you've emphasized that man I want to get all this information out there I talk to all these old cowboys I've listened to my expert uh, trainers which is or the expert uh, 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 testers which is the mule and the donkey I've created what they want what they need and I've put it all together now um, folks have flown you all over the world to do live training um, I would imagine that's not super cheap, but um, but at the same time, it's very much needed. Uh, where are some of the places that you've flown, some of the places that you've been uh, doing training? Well, I just come back from Australia, and I judged the National Mule and Donkey Show there and did a training seminar uh, thanks to some great mule folks and donkey folks there. And I've also been in Egypt training uh, mules in uh, Cairo and on the Sinai Desert. And I've been to Australia, I mean, uh, uh, Israel. And I've been training, I trained mules uh, there. And then also Brazil. I was in the International Equus in 2006 and 2016 and uh, training mules there. So. Uh, yeah, I've been all over the world and also also trained in Canada uh, as well and trained there. And of course, all over the United States, I, I've done that. So 
uh, uh, Dave, I've, you know, I really like to help out these mules. I got the information. Uh, we actually put together a program at Pierce College in LA too uh, at one time. But anyway, going on to what you're talking about here, Dave, I think folks really need to take a listen to this. Yeah. So here's the deal. Um, there is a never-ending stream of information out there. And, uh, and we know that we're contributing to that stream. We're hoping that we're providing you the evidence that you need uh, to know that, hey, this is tried and true. This is not just us talking about you know some theory, but this is actual practice evolved, meaning what maybe Steve did five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, it has evolved as we've learned more about the mule, as we learned more about the donkey. And it sure is exciting to see the equine community, community finally taking notice, realizing that the mule and donkey are different. Now folks, there's a lot of folks who have been way ahead of the curve and they brought Steve out and something Steve did early on, back in the 90s, was I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start recording these clinics. I'm gonna start recording these expos because I want people to be able to take this training with them it's it's they're not going to be able to have a trainer out there 24 7 they're not going to be able to have me out there on their ranch 12 months in a row uh i can't do it and they're not going to do it but they need something and so what steve started doing was he started recording and slowly but surely we built up what you guys now know as steve's instructional videos so many of you guys have them but one of the questions that we get over and over and over is, can I just buy them all? Can I just get all of them? And we haven't done that. Um, there's reasons to it, but we haven't figured out a way to make it work that it allows us to keep doing what we do and get the information to people in a way that they'll actually consume. But over the last two years, we figured out a way to do it. Now, all of Steve's videos together, it is $700. And we've got a lot of folks who have bought a bunch of them. But Steve, I'm, I'm thinking we don't want to make these available for $700. Things are tight right now. Um, folks have a lot of extra time to learn, but they're being conservative with you know maybe what they're spending their money on. So I'm, I'm saying we're, we're not going to sell your library of, of videos. Well, not for $700. Um, I want to put every single video that we have on the website right now from a specific collection. So there's a couple that are for different uh, products that might be excluded, but we've got every true instructional video. I think it's 15 of them. We've put them together. We're calling it the Mule and Donkey Training, uh, the ultimate, the complete video collection. It is nearly all of Steve's life's work in one low price. Um, it's not $700. It's not going to be $600. It's not going to be $500. It's not going to be $400. It's not going to be $375 or $350. We've taken over 33 hours of video, and for the next several days, we're going to be putting that on sale for under $300, just under $300. And the best part, get this, Steve, it's digital. Meaning the second you buy it is the second you get to watch it. Now I'm gonna, you're gonna get a vi, uh, an email tomorrow. Folks are gonna get an email tomorrow um, uh, if they're on our list uh, wow. with a link that I am sharing in the comment section right now. Now, folks, you know we don't come on here and sell. Uh, we'll we'll say here's our tack here or there. We'll say here's what we recommend. Here's what we use. Um, but we do not come on here to sell. This is something that I want to put in front of you. I, I told Steve, hey, Steve, we need to make this available. We need to do something. Steve said, all right, Dave, you figure out a way to make it do it. Let me know about it, and, uh, and we'll see if we can make it happen. Well, I came up with a solution. Steve approved the solution, and now we're making it happen. We're calling it the, uh, the uh, complete video collection. Uh, mule and donkey training. So I just put a link in Facebook. Uh, YouTube, the stream closed. I don't know why. Uh, so uh, if you are interested, um, send me a message. Let me know. Uh, support at muleranch.com. And we want to get this in your hands. So it's a limited time. The price is eventually going to go up. Um, and so I wanted to make sure to let people know. Steve, do you have anything to say about what what videos we've included in here are things that people... Well, we've got your best sellers. How to communicate with your mule, a trailer loading, donkey saddle foundation training, foundation colt starting, 
Um, we've got all your best sellers in there along with why does my mule do that, earshy mules, communicating from the line, communicating with mule after the wreck. Any thoughts you have on why these are so valuable for people? Well, you'll see me, you'll see the consistency over the years, but you'll see how I've taken different people and different mules and help them through. You'll also see where we have green animals, how I help them through. How we have green riders, how I help them through. So <clears throat> I think it was a great idea, Dave, to put these all together. Um, and, and it's digitally. Wow, that's digital. You push a button and you instantly got it there. Saves having to ship them. Saves fooling around with uh, the postal service. But you've got your whole collection there. And if you're stuck, uh, right now at home, like all of us are, who wants to sit and watch the cotton pick and uh, news media that lies anyway? That's that's my opinion uh, on that. But uh, there's there's lots of good information there, folks. Uh, I I, uh, I I applaud Dave for putting this digitally to where zip you can get it. Push a button and you got it instantly flow. So hey, give it a try. Let me know what we can do to help, and I appreciate all of our viewers and this sort of thing clicking there every single week. Dave and I want to hit back this again, but I also got to tell you, folks, this is time consuming. Dave's an extremely, extremely busy guy. He is the head of a very, very high tech digital company. He takes his time out of his life, and he's got three boys and his wife as well and spends this hour hour and a half with you all you know and it's a tremendous blessing to me but folks you need to be letting other folks know that i'm here to help you out dave wants you to have it too as well so uh thank you so much for your time and uh, god bless america and folks when you see a first responder or you know of a nurse or somebody putting forth the effort right now with this tell them thank you pray for them if you know about them pray for them the power of god is moved by your prayers and my prayers yeah absolutely yeah so folks uh, you're going to be hearing more from us over the next couple weeks about this and it's not for any other reason that we want to make sure this information these live stream videos steve's youtube page which is just completely full of free video free instruction and then this complete collection we want to make sure that it gets inside as many hands as possible why because it transforms you into the herd leader that your mule needs you to be a lot of times we think it's a problem with the mule and there's some problems there and we work through them but the best news of all is that many times it is us learning how to communicate, learning how to yeah. serve and to honor the uniqueness of the mule and the donkey. And that's what yep. these videos, that's what this live stream is all about. Helping you understand how to get the most out of this creation uh, that God has given us, the amazing mule and the amazing donkey. And, uh, and so we're going to be talking about it uh, we're not going to be holding back on it because it is a limited time and we want to make sure as many people know about it. And absolutely, as Steve says, we've got a whole new definition of what it means to be a first responder right now with this uh, with the <coughs> coronavirus pandemic going on around the world. Uh, we have added doctors um, and uh, medical experts into that category of first responders because they they truly are so many heroes uh, in the past have uh, have worn Kevlar and uh, and carried a gun. Well, these uh, these folks wear their heart on their sleeve uh, and carry around yeah. life-saving knowledge. And we are incredibly yes. grateful to them. So make sure that you let the medical personnel and the first responders in your family and in your community, when you see them, let them know how much you appreciate them. Steve, thank you so much for taking some extra time today. I know we went long. A lot of folks got a lot of really good questions. And we want to get those answered. So, folks, you all take a, a great uh, rest of the day, and we will see you next week. And, uh, yeah, anything else, Steve? That it? Hug your family. Hug your family. You know, pray for your family and pray for this United States. Absolutely. Absolutely. God bless everybody. Take care. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye now.